Hey, this is Matt from Investopod. Today is Monday, September 18, 2023. Friday closed week down at the lows of the week. And this morning we're trading fairly flat. We were up just a minute ago. As I record this uh, video, we are coming back towards prior day closing price, just barely up. But we're going to be looking at a study based upon gapping up following a close at the lowest closing price of the week. Let me go ahead and get this set up. I've got all four instruments selected. Setups based upon entering long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, currently, we're trading up just a touch. Uh, we could be closed or trading down by the time we open. I have no idea where we're going to be. This study is more interesting if gapping up, though. So I'm going to go with the gap up version of this so you can see it. And if we don't end up uh, opening there, then this would not be relevant for today. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go to the price patterns library, and I'm going to say yesterday closed, or the prior trading day closed at a five-day low. So that is from the active today section. It's also right here in the new low section. After that, I'm going to get the indicators, put us in a similar market environment. We closed below a 10 and above a 200-day simple moving average on Friday. And then lastly, in the calendar library, I'm going to hit equals here next to Monday. Uh, making sure that the Monday is added to the test. Now I can click view results. All right, here we go. These are the results based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern time when you are gapping up on a Monday in the prior session, which would be Friday, closed at a five-day closing low below a 10-day simple moving average, but above a 200-day simple moving average. Historically, we have 86 samples here in the S&P, 87 in the NASDAQ, 81 in the Dow, 81 in the Russell. Win rates on these coming in favor at S&P, 69% of them closing above the opening print. The NASDAQ, 59%. For the Dow, 62%. For the Russell, 59%. If we look at the average moves, average move to the upside for the S&P is larger than the average move to the downside. That's also the case here in the NASDAQ. That is the case in the Dow and in the Russell. So all four of these have an average uh, move to the upside that's larger than the average move to the downside and win rates that are favored. And it looks like the S&P, which is this blue line here, is the most favorable of them all. Again, this is for gapping up. And if I, if I was to change this to a gap down, these stats do change quite a bit, not nearly as attractive as they are um, historically in this version. Anyway, hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck today. We will see you next time.